So in this video, I am going to be showing you how to attach the patch pockets onto um, the tunic from my Shetland Trader book three. This would apply to um, attaching any kind of patch pocket onto a garment. Um, and these are just some guidelines to help you kind of make sure that the pocket gets attached um, so that it's straight um, and sitting in the right place. So what you would begin by doing is actually trying the um, tunic on first and seeing where you want the pockets to sit. So you'd have to be wearing it, you know, looking at yourself in a mirror. And you also would want the pockets to be blocked as well. And you would be placing them, you know, roughly where you want them to be and kind of marking off the, the bottom corner of where you want that horizontal edge here, the bottom of the pocket, to sit um, on the tunic. And then what I've done here is basically to help guide me as I seam the bottom edge of the pocket, I am running just a piece of contrast thread along the bottom edge there um, so that I will keep a straight line and the pocket won't be sewn on um, in some diagonal strange fashion. So I'm just using contrast yarn and I'm going in between behind a V of a stitch, missing the next one, V of the next stitch, and just going along like this, first of all, before I start to do um, the seaming of the bottom edge. So once you have your um, guide line there with the contrast yarn, and it's definitely sitting straight, then you can start to attach the bottom edge of the pocket. And we're going to be working just above the contrast yarn so that we can keep seeing it um, as we work across. And we're actually going to be doing a duplicate stitch to attach the bottom edge. We'll do a mattress stitch for um, the sides of the pocket, but this is quite a nice clean um, looking edge for attaching the bottom part of the pocket. So what I've done is I have a length of my main color yarn and I've come up from the wrong side of the body through the bottom of this first stitch here. And then I'm going to come through the first stitch on my pocket, which um, I'm going to leave this stitch here. These are my steep stitches that I cut before, but I'll be seaming on the vertical on the salvage stitch here. So I'm going to start the duplicate stitch one stitch in from the edge of the pocket. So what I want to do is catch the V of this row of stitches right at the bottom here. It's a little bit difficult to see with this dark yarn. But I essentially want to come through the two Vs there. Of the first stitch on the pocket. And then I'm going to come through the first two V's on the body. So as I said, we're going to try to work just one stitch above where our contrast guideline is there. And you can kind of keep that loose initially um, and sort of snug it up every few stitches. So now I go back to the pocket and I'm going to come into the next V of stitches here. Oops. So catch it like so. And then come back down to the V in the body. So 
Sorry, that knocked on the camera there. And you can see already that it's making this nice, clean connection by just working the duplicate stitch across. So I'm going to do that all the way across um, the bottom edge of the pocket, and then we'll look at doing the mattress stitch for the vertical sides of the pocket. Okay, so I've finished doing the duplicate stitch all along the bottom edge of the pocket here. And I can just go ahead and take that contrast yarn out now. So for doing the vertical, for doing the vertical edges of the pocket here, we're going to be doing mattress stitch. So what I did again to help guide me um, as I work the mattress stitch is I put in a basting stitch all the way up the horizontal, sorry, or all, all the way up the vertical um, line that I need to follow for my mattress stitch on the body there. So that's just what that contrast yarn is helping me do. And I have picked up the first horizontal bar of that vertical line on the body, again, using my main color yarn. And then I am going to be following this main color line all the way up and doing my, doing my mattress stitch into here. So in the case of these particular pockets, because I had steaks, I have this sort of extra fabric here, which is just going to fold in um, as I work. So you might just kind of have to keep an eye on that and tuck it in as you're working. So I've attached the first stitch here. So then I'm gonna come into the actual pocket and find my ver first horizontal bar between the stitches on the pocket and come through that. Come back to the body and find the next horizontal bar, making sure that I'm following that same vertical line. And yeah, you do kind of have to pull scrap yarn and things like that out of the way as you work. Again, come back to the pocket, go into the next horizontal bar. Come back to the body. And basically, you're just going to continue like that, taking your time. And as I said, as you work, that steak will be getting folded into the wrong side or the inside of the pocket. You might notice too that when you pick up the vertical, sorry, the horizontal bars um, on the pocket, you might grab the contrast yarn sometimes because it's stranded across there but that won't matter because that will just get hidden as you seem so just take your time and make sure that you are following the same vertical row of stitches up on both your pocket and the body. And yeah, 
hiding the rest of the stick stitches as you work up. And here it is all finished. So I've got both my vertical edges of the pocket seamed in. And as I said, those steak stitches are still sitting in there, but tucked away now, um, all hidden. And you would just go ahead and do the same with the other pocket and making sure that you are the same distance in from whatever your side seam is. In this case, I had some garter ridges that I could work from and count across. So I make sure that um, I'm placing the other pocket uh, in exactly the same spot as a mirror image.